Welcome to the fourth lecture on visualization of graphs. Today we want to learn about how to get straight line drawings of planar graphs on a grid. And we will learn about the first of two algorithms in this lecture, which is based on the canonical ordering and as it's called the shift method. So during the lectures I always told you, if we have a planar graph, we want it to be drawn planar, we want straight line edges, but I never really told you why we want to do that. So to give you some additional motivation, there has been lots of user studies about this topic, and I think we can trust them. And as an example, I want to show you just an excerpt from the paper The Aesthetics of Graph Visualization from 2007 by Bennett Ryle, Spalzerholz and Gooch. Here, in the chapter where they talk about how to place edges, they say that by far the most agreed upon edge placement heuristic is to minimize the number of edge crossings. And later they also say it's beneficial to minimize the number of edge bends. And if you want to minimize something, in the optimal case we don't have anything of this. So if we have no edge crossings, then we have a planar drawing, and if we have no bends, then we have a straight line drawing. Then the question is, what are still our drawing aesthetics? And for that, in this part, we will focus on the area. So we focus on planar graphs. Whenever you look at a graph class, there are a few important questions you want to ask yourself. And three of the most important ones are, can we characterize this graph class? Can we recognize this graph class? And how can we draw it? For the characterization, we already learned in the first lecture that there is Kurochowski's theorem. So a graph is planar if and only if neither the k5 nor the k33 are a manner of the graph. And that also immediately gave us a recognition algorithm, although it was not very fast. So I also want to mention here the fast algorithm by Hopcroft and Tarjan from 1974 that can recognize a planar graph in linear time. And this algorithm also computes a planar embedding for you. So whenever in the future we want to draw planar graphs, we can already assume that we have checked that the graph is planar, and we can also assume that we have some planar embedding, since we can do all of this in linear time. About drawings, well, so far we had force-directed algorithms that work for any graph, we have TAT's algorithm that works for three connected planar graphs, then we had algorithms for trees and series parallel, but no algorithm that works for all planar graphs and draws them planar. But there are a few quite old theorems, namely by Wagner, by Fary, and by Stein, and they were all proven independently. And they say every planar graph has a planar drawing where the edges are straight line segments. So in fact, we can draw every planar graph this way. The problem with these proofs is um, the area is not bounded by any polynomial in it, so they, it is at least exponential in n. And that's usually something that we don't like too much. We want small area so that everything fits on our computer screen. If the area is too huge and you want to look at it on your screen, then you have to zoom very far out, and then you might have some spots like we saw in the chart drawing, where you have many nodes in a small area and then others are very far apart and you cannot see anything. We first want to look at a special class of planar graphs, so-called triangulations. A triangulation is a plane graph where every face is a triangle. Now plane means that we have a planar graph together with a planar embedding. Now let's have a look at this clearly plane graph. If we look at the faces, we have a triangle here and here but here we have a quadrilateral. How can we make this a triangulation? Well, we can for example take these two vertices and connect them. And now we have a triangle here and a triangle here. But there's still the outer face. This is also a quadrilateral. So again, we have to pick two vertices and connect them to create two triangles. And now we have a triangulation. Of course, if we don't care about the outer face, then we can also call something a plane inner triangulation. Then we only say that all the inner faces have to be triangles and the outer face can be as large as we want. Now there's a second subclass, which are the maximal planar graphs. A maximal planar graph is a planar graph where we cannot add any edge without destroying planarity. 
or let's have a look at this example. Can you find some edge that we can add without destroying planarity? Well, actually we cannot. For example, if we add an edge here, then it would create a crossing with this edge. If we route it through the outer face, then we have a crossing with this one. And since every face is a triangle, and every edge we have want to add can only be drawn planar if it lies completely inside a face, we cannot add it anywhere, because in a triangle all the vertices are already neighbored. So we can observe that a maximal plane graph is exactly a plane triangulation. So these two graph classes are exactly the same. And one can also easily prove that a plane triangulation is at least three connected. And so it has a unique planar embedding. And now what's great about this is, if we focus on plane triangulations, then we can draw all the planar graphs. Because every plane graph is a subgraph of a plane triangulation. So let's say we have a planar graph and we have some face that is too large, that has more than three vertices. How would you extend this graph to a supergraph that is a plane triangulation? There are a few ways. One example is that we pick a single vertex and connect it to everybody in this face except the neighbors it already has. And if we take this supergraph and we go back to our original graph, then we have a subgraph. Another way that we can do it is that we add a single vertex in every face and connect it to all the vertices that lie on the boundary of the face. This works as long as the input graph is already biconnected, so all our faces are simple cycles. If they are not simple cycles, then we have to add a few more edges, but we can still easily do it. And with these observations, we already get our first result for today. Because every triangulation is three connected, we can use Tut's theorem to draw the triangulation. And if we have any plane graph, we just add edges to make it a triangulation. We draw it with Tut's algorithm and then we remove the edges again. So Tut's algorithm creates a planar straight line drawing for every planar graph. Although, again, the area might be exponential, so it's not polynomially bounded in n. And that's not what we want. There are two algorithms that uh, we want to focus on that create drawings on polynomial area. And they were independently found both around 1990. The first one, by De Frissé, Pach and Pollack, achieves a planar straight line drawing for every n vertex planar graph on a grid of size 2n minus 4 times n minus 2. And the second one, by Schnuder, gets a slightly better bound with n minus 2 times n minus 2. This one we will have a look at next week, so for today this is the result we want to prove. And these are the three authors of it. The main idea behind the algorithm is as follows. We pick an edge of the outer face and then we inductively add new vertices. So this is our graph G2. Now let's say we have our graph GI, like this. Then we want to pick some vertex that we haven't drawn yet and place it on the outer face. And then all the connections we have must be to vertices that lie on the outer face. But since we have a triangulation, if you look here, this would mean that we have a large face. So instead, we want to make sure that the neighbors all lie on a path on the other face. And how to do that and how to prove that this is possible, that we will do in the next few parts.